Welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks, and we have just completed the first series on basic setup of your number one D5 smartwatch. We have it all fine-tuned with access to the internet, a long time delay before the screen times out, and uh, access to Google Play Store with an update to the installed Google application. So the watch is ready to go in absolutely any direction you want to take it. We're going to take it into some essential apps that you're definitely going to want to install, but not yet. While we have this watch completely clean like it is right now, what I'm going to do is give you an overview of how it's doing on user-installed keyboards. I got a list here that shows the different uh, keyboards that I tested on this watch, and all of these failed. If one of these is your favorite, you might want to contact the vendor and ask them if they can remap a rectangular keyboard to fit on a round watch. The reason I say that, as you can see, we have a round format, but it really is looking at a square that's larger than the circle. So when one of these keyboards is installed, it isn't that it shrinks down and fits right on top of the uh, round circular watch, it actually expands out over the edges as if this were a square watch. And that means every single one of these keyboards, as great as they are, have the limitation of not being able to display or activate anything in the corners. It got pretty easy after a while installing these and seeing they didn't work. Pretty soon you just look at one and you can tell it's going to work or not going to work. It will only work if the contour is round. So which ones work? Well, here's the list. The Android keyboard is installed. There's this particular JBAK2 keyboard with a special custom design we'll be talking about in this video. The Message Ease keyboard, Nova Key, Pinyin Me, which is already installed, which is kind of a quasi Chinese English keyboard, and finally voice typing keyboard free, not the paid version, which is another very interesting keyboard for this particular watch. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and install these working keyboards and we're going to install a special application called Quick Keyboard Switch. Now you really won't have to do this if you decide upon what keyboard you'd like to use as your regular keyboard. I'm doing this in order for you to evaluate which ones you'd like and when you pick on one that you'd like to install, if you don't want to just take the custom one, you can always use the basic Android keyboard. It does work and works well. After all, it was designed and redesigned to fit in the round watch. But if you want to use another one from watching this video, you'll be able to install it along with the essential applications that we'll be covering in an upcoming video. So let's get started. I'm going to show you a more advanced way of doing this in terms of installing these keyboards, rather than going to the Google Play Store, which you'll be doing a lot of in your first pass, you should only have to go there once and never again to acquire any of these apps. If you use the app that I was talking about, which is the uh, app Backup and Restore, you'll be able to basically bring in all the apps that you download from the Google Play Store and install them on your watch. When you back them up, they're backing up from the running partition of the memory over to the storage partition area, and they're carefully placed in a folder called App Backup and Restore. When you go into that folder, you get the listing of all your different apps. So let's see which ones. We want one that starts with a J, M, and N, and V. So let's scroll down. the J. There we are. And it's as simple as this. This is the APK. When I touch on it, it's the same as if I just downloaded it from the Play Store. And it's asking me to install it. I go through all the permissions and I accept what it's asking me. And I basically install the keyboard. It's done. I'm not going to open it yet. I'm going to go ahead and install the other ones. Messages. which is, uh-oh, message ease is not on here. 
Well, that messes everything up. All right, we'll get that from the Google Play Store. Nova Key. Let's install that one. And then the uh, voice typing keyboard free. And I'm so sorry, but not paid. I, I went ahead and paid him anyway, because these really, uh, these really good developers that make quality products, they deserve some remuneration for what they're doing. Whoops. But you have to use the free version. You have to. It won't work without it. And you'll see why in a minute. Voice. Typing keyboard. Okay, that's this one. And we'll install that. Okay, I'm going to take you offline for a moment and go on over to the Play Store and bring in Message E. Sorry, it wasn't backed up. Um, that's why you got to make sure you do this so you have them all in your archive. I'll get that from the Google Play Store, and then I'll pick back up after we edit that part out. Okay, I'm back with you. I went ahead and installed Message E's keyboard. By the way, I put two E's in there. It's only one. Message E's. Say E's. Um, the one more thing we definitely want to install right now is called the Quick Keyboard Switch, which I do have backed up. So we are going to install that one. And this one we're actually going to open because it's this particular app that we're going to use as our main navigator for working with these keyboards. Let's move the paper away. All right, what have we got? We have some release notes, and we're into the uh, whole thing. You got two things, uh, changing keyboard and editing the keyboard settings. We're going to edit the keyboard settings, and we have to put check marks beside all of these keyboards that we plan on using. Okay, there's the Google Voice typing, which should have a check mark by it. It's part of the default. And that's automatic. So make sure you have that checked if you're going to use voice input. Here's message ease. Now watch. The first one, we do this, and we get this really big warning that the input method may be able to co uh, collect the text that you type, including all sorts of things like personal data, passwords, credit card numbers, all of that stuff. These are all on the Google Play Store. They're not third-party kind, um, so they're presumably trusted. It's up to you if you want to do this. If you do, you're accepting the risk. I've done it, haven't been compromised. So I'm going to go through all of them. I'm not going to do the pinion me, um, the speech keyboards automatically selected in voice typing. So we're really only looking at three new keyboards. But I select them all at once this way in this app, and it makes it really easy. But now I can go back. <laughs> and change keyboard. The default keyboard is going to be the Android keyboard. So let's see what that looks like. We just need an app that we can bring up a keyboard in. So we can probably go to, wow, I should have just hit the button and come back in again. That's much faster. Let's go find the browser. There's a barometer. There's a browser. Any app that lets you do keyboard inputs is going to give us a chance to test it. So we're going to click up here. And take a look at the layout. This is your standard keyboard that comes with the watch. It actually is fairly accurate when you touch it. It's good at the space control, and it has a microphone for voice input. You have one, two, three, which changes the keyboard to your numbers and symbols. And then you can change it back. Pretty basic keyboard. All right. We're going to come back here. And now... Watch this. I'm going to scroll all the way down to recent apps. Instead of clearing them now, I'm just going to switch back up here to this one. Uh, we're not going to go pro. Oh, it wants me to rate it. I really don't have options there. All right, let's just get back out of there. We're going to change the keyboard to our first one, Message Ease. Now, Message Ease is a really interesting keyboard in the way they designed it because it actually does work for the watch. Let's go back to our browser. And set up something up here at the top. You have to learn a little bit new 
way of working with your watch. And what I ha highly recommend, and I did this, is I installed this keyboard on my uh, phone because you can actually read what these letters say here on your phone much more than you can on your watch. I'm going to make the keyboard bigger so we can see what we're looking at by swiping up on the up arrow. And you can get it pretty darn big. The main letters in the center of the screen are the common letters that, it turns out, are used on a keyboard. And to enter any of these, you simply tap the key. The little letters, the white ones that are all around the inside, are directional. Now, there are some directional keyboards that we looked at before, but they won't work on this platform because the edges are cut off. This design allows this particular keyboard to work and work well. If I wanted um, the letter E, I just type an E. You can kind of see it over there, S, T. See how simple that is? If I want the letter Y, I start at the T and I swipe inward. If I want the letter F, I go that way. If I want the letter O, I tap in the center. But if I wanted D, I swipe down. And U, I would swipe up. You can actually get some pretty fast typing on this. And this is an excellent keyboard for entering passwords like back in your router, if you remap your router and you've got a convoluted password, you can do that. You tap the one, two, three, and of course you get the number keyboard over here. All right. You slide here and you get the microphone. And this microphone is pretty darn good, comma. It's not actually Google. It's something else, period. And it typed all that stuff out for me. And it's really easy. You're not hunting for a tiny key. You're just doing a swipe. Tap the ABC and you're back again. Space bar is down here. Backspace is here. It's an overall basic, functional, good keyboard. And it's one I recommend because it's usable on the phone. And it's on the watch as well as on the phone. But it's not my favorite. Let's keep looking. We're going back. You know what? It's right down there. Look at that. Silly me. I go here. I'm at the very bottom. It was the last thing I installed. So we can just click quick keyboard and it comes up faster than going through all of that. The Nova key. Let's see what that one looks like. All right. We're bringing up the Nova key. The Nova key browser is another swiping kind of a uh, of a, I'm not a browser, but a keyboard. It's another swiping kind of keyboard, very similar to what we just looked at, only much, much more basic. As you can see, you've got everything laid out, but instead of key uh, letters in, in particular rectangular squares, you've got this kind of a design pattern. But the same concept applies. If I want the letter M, I go like that. If I want the letter R, it's in this box, but I move toward the center. If I want G, I just touch it. If I want H, I go up that way. You see what I'm doing? Z, Z, over, oops, I went D. I held it and went out. That's because it's on the inside of the circle. If I want the Z, I go from here in. Whoops. There we go. If you go like that, you get the space. If you go like that, you get the backspace. What's missing are two things. Over here, just cut off, but you can see a little bit of writing, is the way you switch it to the numbers and symbols. As long as you know that, you're okay. The other thing that you can't see, and this is really challenging, is opposite that over here is the period. You see I put in a period or a dot? It's just a tap right in the corner, and you could easily miss it. If you do this on your phone, you'll be able to see what the keyboard really looks like. And again, get used to where the letters are and swipe them. They are different than what we looked at on the Message Ease keyboard. And in the Nova key, they're mapped differently. So play with both, decide what you like, learn it, and use it if you like this kind of a layout. Okay? But that's still not my favorite. It works well, but it's not quite it yet. So we're going to switch to the voice typing keyboard free. And we go back into the browser. Are we there? Do we still have the browser? Did we close it? Oh, good, we've got it. All right. Now, oh, this has got goods and bads about it. The good news is you got yourself a nice little keyboard. If you say, oh, you don't have to. It opened up by itself. 
Um, this is a voice responsive keyboard that's actually always listening. I don't know what effect this will have on battery life. I have to check that. But if you are one of those that wants to be able to really minimally touch your watch and are in a place where you can speak, this is a great keyboard. The free version puts an ad down at the bottom. Because it does that, it bumps the keyboard up just a little bit, and miraculously, everything is touchable. Almost off the edge in the corners, but nonetheless, you can actually get there and it works. It's a smaller condensed keyboard, and that could be a problem compared with the, the Android keyboard. I'm hearing beepings. That's because it's interpreting my words. I thought the camera was ready to shut off, but it's not. It's actually listening to me because I said the key word for this keyboard, and it began the voice recognition system. Yeah, that could be a problem. Um, let's see if I do this. Hide keyboard. Hide keyboard. Hide keyboard. It's being temperamental. When you say show keyboard, the keyboard's supposed to pop up and be visible. When you say hide keyboard, it will hide it. But actually, I've got to be quiet for a moment so it will catch up with me and stop. Hear the double beep? That got me out of the recognition system and now it's listening for commands. Aya. Hide keyboard. Oh, don't be like that. Hide keyboard. <laughs> All right. That's not my favorite either. With a little bit of practice, you might be able to get that to work. It's really tiny if you want to type in uh, on it. You can, but it's mostly for that voice thing. Okay. Now, finally, we are to the keyboard that I particularly like the best to use on this watch because of its multifaceted features that it presents to us. It's called the JBAK2 keyboard, and right off of the bat, it's non-functional. Like many of the other ones, it's made for a rectangular display, and the edges are cut off. But an interesting de development has shown up on the XDA Developers Forum, uh, for the keyboard and uh, watch face designers of this particular class of watches. A gentleman uh, goes by Paul Bort, B-O-R-T, P-A-U-L, B-O-R-T, one word, is a contributor to that forum. And in his post number 262, I'll have all the links to this again at the, the bottom of this YouTube video, um, you click on that and go to the message 262, and you'll find a zipped file that you can download. And the contents of that file is a completely redesigned set of keyboard layouts for this particular keyboard design program. So let's take a look at what we're talking about. We are choosing this one to be our input, the JBAK keyboard. And if we go over to our browser... Oops, I went to Google. That's all right. We just want to go up here and tap in here so we get the keyboard. You'll notice that the keyboard is a nice keyboard, but it's cut off. It doesn't work. It's non-functional in the round environment. So we leave here. We come back into the setup for the keyboard. And in here, in language and layouts, this is where it starts. You come down here after it's activated and go into language and layouts and you have a whole bunch of selections of languages. English is selected up at the top, and if you tap the little key on the side, it comes up with the keyboards. Now, you have to have installed these files, and in a moment I'll show you where they go. If they're in there, when you activate this uh, configuration control, you just simply tap on the left arrow. These are left and right arrows just off the screen, but you can actually touch them. The left arrow should take you one keyboard over, and that is the new layout keyboard that's been mapped for the round watch by Paul Bort, who has a donate button next to his name. 
please, if you like this keyboard and you've gone through everything you're about to go through to get it installed, throw him up five bucks or something, okay? It's really well worth it. He's a phenomenal designer. I wish I could do this kind of stuff. All you got to do is hit save, the little save icon, and the setting has been saved for that keyboard. There are other keyboards, as you'll see in a minute, associated with this. So you get past all the languages and down into these different character keyboards and editing keyboards and all of that stuff. And you have to tap on the side. And I've already done it. You click on the button once to the left. You'll come up with the round, it always ends in round, design keyboard for the watch. And hit the save button. And it saves that to the standard default program. Go through each and every one of these, hitting the right-hand button and clicking once and saving that keyboard that's designed for round, and you're done. Now, finally, we can go into the browser. We can click in here. And again, this could be a notes program, anything. I'm just using it to show you the keyboard. There you have it, a fully functional keyboard in round. So you say, all right, that looks pretty much like the Android keyboard. Yeah, okay. Does the Android keyboard do this? Press and hold on the up button. And look, you've got an edit keyboard. You can go home or end, back to the beginning or the, or, or, or the end of the section. Navigate up and down, left and right with your arrow keys and select. If you hit select on a word and move over a few uh, characters, you're selecting the whole thing. Then you can copy, paste, or cut whatever you'd like to do fully editable keyboard. It's an editing keyboard. You can, um, of course, go into your numbers, your symbols, and they're all properly selected for the watch. An amazing keyboard. So where do you put these things? It's really easy. You get your charging cradle, hook it on, hook the wire into your computer, and acknowledge on the screen uh, USB storage. It'll ask if you want it. Say yes. This will mount on your computer as an external drive, like a thumb drive or something like that. And whoops, you simply go into the uh, information where you downloaded these files from um, the internet, from Paul Bort's uh, link that he puts in his blog on the forum. And after you've run the program, the program itself is going to create this particular folder called JBAC Keyboard. And in that is a folder called Keyboards. So on your computer, Mac, PC, Windows, whatever, you drag all those unzipped files into this folder. That's all you got to do after you're connected as an external drive. Not hard at all. You drag them into here, you're done. Uh, do all that first, okay? Get the files in here. Then go and do the configuration that I showed you that we did by running the program, okay? Going from the top down to where you see language and layouts, starting with the first one, and go through and replace the default keyboard layouts with these new ones. And you'll have this fully functional keyboard at your disposal. So we've covered a lot. We've covered the JBAC2 keyboard with a special implementation layout. We've covered Message Ease keyboard that has a nice voice input uh, capability to it, as well as a really interesting way of sliding around. And the Nova key, which does a similar kind of a sliding around uh, technique. And the other one that was a little flaky for us, uh, not even on here, I guess it got embarrassed, the uh, voice input keyboard. It was called Voice Typing Keyboard Free. I'll have links in uh, the description down below that you just click on to go to the uh, uh, Google Play Store for each of those keyboards. And of course, remember that you can bring down uh, the quick keyboard switch is what this is called to instantly and easily be able to change to any of the keyboards that you'd like to try out. I'm going to give it one more try. Okay, we're going to the voice typing keyboard. We're going to go back into the browser. See if it's going to behave for us. 
there we are. And it wants you to begin your sentence with something like spell or some. Whoops, I said the word. Now it's going to listen to me. Uh oh. Anyway, show keyboard. No, now you're listening, aren't you? Hello? Now I got to wait for it to stop. That was a double beep. If you're doing this right, you say a sentence and you pause and it'll beep when it's done. Then you say another one and it'll beep. And then you wait a little longer and you'll get a double beep and it'll be out of the editing mode. And then you can th say something like, show keyboard. Show keyboard. Hide keyboard. Where's the keyboard? Show keyboard. Well, wow. I hope you have more patience than I do. It actually does work well when you're not in the moment of trying to do a video. Anyway, if you guys know of any other keyboards I should be looking at, let me know. Drop a note. Um, I'm going to disengage all of these from the watch now uh, uh, so we can start back in on installation of critical apps that you want to have. This was just an opportunity for you to take a look at some of the keyboards that work in case you'd also like to install one of those with the apps that we are about to enjoy on our brand new number one D5 smartwatch phone. See you soon.